What's up, guys? Time for the best game of the past week. I played lots of games and I came up with this one. It happened in the Accelerated Dragon. I was white. And as you know, uh, the habit is to show you my best Blitz game for the past week. In this one, I was white and I played against the guy 2500 rated who played an Accelerated Dragon. So you see a crazy position. Let's see how did we get there. Uh, I played a 4 first move, your turns out to be the most favorite move on the channel. He went for the Sicilian defense and you know how much I like to play Butcher the Sicilian that I actually have an amazing result with it. But I just decided to go with Knight F3 to make the things even more interesting for my viewers who like to play the open Sicilians. So he went for G6 and I said okay. Here I also like the move c3 followed by bishop uh, followed by d4. I also like bishop c4 where you just avoid d5 by black. But I decided to play the Sicilian defense, open line d4, hyper accelerated uh, fianchetto against that one with the d4. So my opponent captured, and along with, of course, the most logical thing where you just take by knight. I decided to surprise my opponent and take by queen. For all of you who like bullet chess, it's always good to play and to take by queen way, way better than the knight because they can pre-move knight is uh, they can pre-move bishop g7 move. So that's how you can win the bishop for free and g7. Anyways, I decided to play the queen d4 for uh, serious uh, purposes. I'm just developing this queen on d4 and I'm just uh, threatening the rook, but also by involving my queen into the center. I just want to uh, go for one uh, a rarely played line, but a very interesting, with a very interesting possibilities for white. My opponent went with the only move knight f6, and I played knight c3. That's one of the possibilities. Uh, there is also a possibility to push this pawn to e5, although I didn't opt for that one. I decided to play knight c3. Of all the possibilities for white, Knight c3 has absolutely the best score with the white pieces. Okay, I played knight c3. My opponent played the most logical knight c6. And I moved my queen to hold the way to a4. That's the main line. And I was expecting by my opponent to go with d6. In which case, I would go with e5, d takes, knight takes. And now they have three moves. If they play like this, you take and you have the bishop pair. A little bit better game for white. If they go with bishop g7, you just play bishop b5 and uh, you're a little bit better in this type of the game as well. And finally, if they go with the queen d4, you can just take on c6 and play better endgame because of three pawn islands. Although my opponent surprised me. And after I played queen a4, he just decided and said, okay, let's surprise this guy. Let's play bishop g7. This was a good surprise for me. And I don't like bishop g7 move because... I immediately punished my opponent with e5. Why e5? Because after you play e5, you kick the knight away, and at the same time, this knight has uh, no possibility to jump on d5, not on g4, because the queen uh, absolutely keeps an eye on the g4, and he can jump there. He played knight g8, and I, uh, of course, he he's threatening to take on e5, so I played bishop f4. I'm not only supporting the pawn in the center with the bishop f4, but now I also want to make the long castle and play a very, very sharp game. He went for knight h6 because he also wants to create uh, quite an, of course, to solidify his position by playing short castle and to put his knight back into the game by jumping on f5 eventually. I played long castle and he played short castle. And let me just give you the first strategic lesson here. For example, if I played a, a normal tournament game, I would always play h3 at this point. Because a knight on h6 is pretty bad. It's stranded on the h file on the king's side. Uh, he just wants to put it back into the game by playing knight f5. And here, strategically speaking, you can find lots of examples like this. You should be going with h3. Why? If he goes with knight f5, uh, trying to solidify himself and find some sort of game in the center, you should just go with g4. Kicking that knight away, knight can no longer go to d4, d6, h4, actually nowhere. 
and this knight he has to go back on h6 it's terrible knight it's absolutely limited by these two pawns and now it gives you precious time to carry on with your development for example to put the queen back into the center to develop your bishop i don't know c4 b5 e2 don't do it here because you would close the d file and even even g2 wouldn't be bad and most important thing is to remember that when you play h3 and g4 you just limit and restrict the knight's activity on h6 also if they don't do anything but for example play a6 to kick that queen away you play once again g4 and you once again limit the possibility of this guy to play knight f5 and for the rest of the game you can just play a safe game where they have problems with terribly placed knight on h6 and also kind of closed bishop on g7 although since it was a blitz game i decided to have fun especially now uh, when I know that I want to present you and to give you like some interesting uh, attacking ideas and attractive chess and you know how much I like this uh, h4 move h4 is not bad at all uh, but definitely it's not the move that should be played objectively as the best move here although in blitz I, and in rapid games I always give myself you know like that kind of a freedom and uh, satisfaction to go with these kinds of moves here i believe that my opponent was supposed to jump here going after the f2 pawn in which case i would have to either decide to second exchange with h5 and when he takes i don't know to move my bishop to c4 and to go h takes g4 and stuff like that or just to defend it uh, somehow for example rook to d2 defending on f2 and then trying to carry on but in with h5 but in that case they can play h5 and now your attack becomes way more difficult and considerably uh, more difficult although my opponent played knight f5 which was obviously uh, a mistake in the game that knight doesn't belong there that knight does nothing there and i decided to immediately push my pawn up to h6 and open the h file this is a very nice one i want to take on g6 i want to open the h file and i want to run an initiative my opponent played queen b6 h takes and h takes and i would like to stop here for the second time because previously i was explaining about h3 and g4 restricting strategic idea against the knight on the rim of the board but here i want to uh, talk about one very important part of tactics in chess it's called deflection because i immediately imagined removing those two knights and jumping with my knight on uh, e7 mating the king on g8 and that's how you gotta think in your games that's what you have to imagine that's what you have to visualize and to try to simply execute that idea during the game so i said okay let's go i played bishop d3 let me remove the first knight now he played knight to d4 thanks man because i said let me just go with the knight d5 and i'm one move away from mating you i just need to move this knight he played queen c5 and after queen c5 i took on d4 to be honest with you i was expecting that he, he was gonna go with knight d4 in which case i would do deflection Ta -da -da -da. so you sack the queen if he takes the queen a very nice checkmating pattern with knight e7 because of the open h file and the nice mate kind of smarter type of mate although he realized that and played queen to d5 then i said I gotta come up with something attractive here i need to do something and i'm still looking at the pawn on e7 so i said let's go all in with knight f5 here i made all these crazy errors like you're watching nakamura's channel and like you're actually checking one of his games but i really tried to explain you got an open h file you want to threaten on e7 your queen at some point wants to go after that knight and to take uh, that mate on e7 uh, in the game and during the game i just have to visualize what's happening if he captures because you can just sack a piece like that and say okay that's it i should be winning no i played knight f5 and i saw that if he takes i played bishop f5 i was threatening his queen and if he goes here i said i would give him check and here i would give discover check and then i'd be winning so i said okay that's the way it is and i saw that one and then during the game i said if he plays queen a5 
It's very important when you come up with those kinds of co combinations to see yourself, at least I have perpetual check, if nothing better. So I said to myself, I do have a perpetual check. And uh, at some point, uh, after a few seconds, I just realized, ah, but I don't have to go with perpetual check. Actually, since he's threatening my queen, I can put my queen on e4, threaten bishop g8, and he cannot escape checkmate on h7 eventually. Because of that, my opponent decided to take, he just took on g2. I mean, that's a very optimistic move. I can play a rook g1, I can play bishop e4, I can play knight g7, and I should be winning. But I ended this game in the most beautiful style. Don't forget, the topic of the game is deflection. So I just capture and sacrifice my queen for the knight because I am taking away the defender of the e7 square and I just want to meet you. If you take the knight, I'll take the queen. If you take the queen for free by pawn, by queen, or by another pawn, I'm just delivering checkmate. So after queen c6, my opponent resigned. Hope that you enjoyed in the game, best game for the past weekend. I just gave you another interesting sis open Sicilian possibility against Accelerated Dragon with the queen d4. Enjoy and have fun with the games. Bye-bye, guys.